who keeps your promises, Lord, and that you're a God that wants to bless us. And we just claim those blessings over our families and over our lives.
together, we can still be together spiritually and that you're still here in our midst, Lord. Just thank you so much for your presence. And we just pray that you would prepare our hearts for your word this morning, Lord. That you would change us and that you would renew us. Thank you so much for who you are. Well, good morning, New Hope Community Church, and thank you so much for joining us every Sunday morning here online. Well, I've got a lot of announcements for you today, so uh, listen up. If you're not connected, get connected. Um, There's no better time um, just to stay connected with the body of Christ as uh, we, as the times and days are uncertain, as things are getting locked down and reopened, um, people getting sick and people getting better. Um, it's a perfect time to uh, send in your prayer requests. Let us know how we can pray for you. Um, it's a great time to be connected. You can text Aloha to the number 28950 um, to get connected. And um, I know this Sunday, tonight, uh, there will be no in-person service. And we're really hoping and praying that we'll be able to gather next Sunday to celebrate our anniversary Sunday in person. But if we are unable to celebrate, we'll let you know as soon as possible Um, of any updates. But remember that you can always find us here online at 7.30 and 9.30 um, every single week. Our youth group will resume meeting this Wednesday night at our home, the Dangannon home. If you have any questions or need more information, you can um, text Pastor Pat. We have our men's group every Saturday at 6 a.m. You see, church, maybe it's a season of not being able to gather, but it's definitely not a season to not be connected. We can still stay connected. We can still grow in our times um, together. And so uh, please stay connected. With that, um, why don't we pray for our, our tithes and our offerings Uh, Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you, God, so much for your provision, for the times that you have provided uh, when it seemed like there wasn't enough, when when it seemed like we didn't know um, where we were going to get our next step from. Lord, you have provided. um, You continue to provide for our needs. And so, Lord, I pray over every gift, every tithe, every offering that is given. I pray, Lord, that you would bless it and that you would use it to expand your kingdom. Lord, I pray a blessing on each and every single one of our uh, church members, Lord, who are giving, who continue to give, Lord, in a season where maybe work has been unstable or unsteady. Lord, I know that there are those that are, are faithful to give. And so, Lord, would you just continue to provide continue to provide for the needs of our church. Lord, I pray for a place um, that you will provide a place so that we can meet um, every Sunday morning together in person. Um, Lord, there is nothing too difficult and nothing that is impossible for you. So Lord, I pray God that you would continue to meet the needs of our church, um, that you would continue to grow and expand. Um, your Let your kingdom come, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We love you, Lord, and we give you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, well, we have been in a season of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And so we're going to hear from our pastor, John, as he brings us the word and encouragement as you continue on in your 21 days. Let's take a look. Well, aloha and good morning, you guys. Um, Welcome to our 21 days of prayer and fasting. That's our sixth day in, almost one full week. Like for real, this is church. Like how are you guys doing? Uh, How are you holding up with uh, prayer and fasting? I got a couple of uh, phone calls from you guys this week and I received a couple of text messages of you really just pressing in and contending for what God has for you and your future and your family. You know, 
Um, it's been great to hear just praise reports of you allowing hunger to serve its higher purpose to cause you to pray. You know, I talked to a brother this week and he said like, Pastor, man, I was so hungry. I felt this, my stomach growl. I, 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 I felt this, this, this sense of drawing near and trying to watch uh, my Netflix or watch uh, TV or trying to log into my social media. But I, I turned my physical hunger into spiritual hunger for God. I turned my, my appetite for social media and I redeemed that and it served its purpose and I used that to uh, have an appetite for uh, God and His kingdom and His will being done in my life. Uh, remember, uh, fasting is not easy, prayer is not easy, and life is not easy. And we don't fast and pray so that we could make life better, but we fast and pray because Jesus is better than life. Amen? And I just want to encourage you that, hey, we're in this together. Um, remember the biblical focus and God-centered purpose of your fast. Maybe it's to break the stronghold of sin, the stronghold of alcohol, maybe repentance in your children or repentance in your spouse. Maybe it's the healing of cancer or financial provision. Whatever it is, we utilize our physical hunger, our worldly appetite, and we redeem that for good. And that's the purpose of, of fasting. So in the words of the brilliant thespian, half Jewish, half Filipino, Rob Schneider, who says, you can do it, all right? And you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, all right? Through lacking and through abundance, lacking uh, seasons of, of fill and not having enough. This season of fasting, you can do it. So if you broke your fast and maybe you slipped, hey, it's all good. You are still the beloved son and daughter of the living God. But may I encourage you, Proverbs 24, 16, though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. So if you slipped up this week, if maybe you took that bite of dessert or uh, chocolate or sugar or you watched or you, you ate a meal that you shouldn't have eaten, hey, no worry, chicken curry. Just get back up because you're a righteous man and woman of God and continue in fasting. All right. So last week we talked about the role of spiritual opposition and conflict when you fast and pray. And today we're going to talk about the sacrifice of praise in fasting. The sacrifice of praise in fasting. Uh, that's to say that we're going to go through the role of praise and worship in fasting and discover that there's power of praise, in, in especially when we fast. So let's just get straight to the point here. I have three points for us today in regards to praise and prayer and worship in our fasting. The first is this, that praise is the start of prayer. Praise is the start of prayer. Sometimes people have this idea that songs are just like the preliminary to the real thing, when that is not the case at all. You know, we treat praise and worship, the lifting up of hands, the singing with our voices, the, sh the worshiping in thanksgiving, the shouting with our mouths. As we treat it, I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, with boxing, like undercards, or if UFC, we treat, it, we treat it like preliminaries to the main event, quote unquote, of God's word. You know, it's a weird dynamic when we had in-person service where people would just come to me and say, hey, pastor, uh, you know, I just come late and I skip through all the singing and clapping and stuff because, pastor, I need the word. I need the meat of God's word. I need the rhyme of God's word. And, you know, I see a, a, a trend a discernible trend, even our online church, church service where, you know, about um, people start rolling in uh, after praise and worship, that they just want to be it for the word. But listen, uh, praise is incredibly 
powerful when it comes to the release of God's work in our life, in our circumstances, especially when praise is coupled with fasting. Praise is not a replacement of prayer, but praise is the start of prayer. Look at what Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. How do you enter God's gates? How do we come before Him? What is it that we do? How should we start our prayer time? The psalmist says, enter His gates with what? Thanksgiving and enter His courts with praise. Now, I realize that, you know, we interpret Scripture through genre or the type of literature that we're reading in Psalms. It's... um, you know, it's, it's poetic. And a lot of the poems in Psalms, it's, they call it uh, s- parallelism. Uh, specifically in this instance, it's called synonymous parallelism, that they're trying to say the same thing, that we enter into God's presence or we start our time of worship before God with praise and thanksgiving. But praise and thanksgiving are not the same. Thanksgiving is where we acknowledge what God has done in our life. In other words, we, how are we to enter into God's presence? By we, we start it with thanksgiving where we begin to replay and we begin to recount what God has done in our lives. Jesus, you've done this for me. Jesus, you have saved me. Lord, you have delivered me this week. Lord, you've strengthened me. Jesus, you reconciled my relationships. You provided for my needs this week. You really pulled through. And we enter his courts with thanksgiving. Enter the gates of God. Enter into worship with thanksgiving. But praise is not necessarily um, remembering what God has done. But praise really is we consider who he is. It's almost too two sides of a coin, where we um, express, when we vocalize through the lifting of hands, through the shouting of the name of Jesus, where we remember, God, you're compassionate, God. You're abounding in mercies. You're slow to anger. You're abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you love us what we could ever imagine, and you love us with an unconditional love. Uh, where when we come before God, we sing with the angelic host, with all of the angels in Revelation, where it says, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Lord, that there is none like you, Jesus. Who can, we, who can I compare to you, O God? We remember and we inform the, we have the Bible inform our theology and inform our praise and worship. We're in the book of Isaiah where Isaiah has his vision of God. And he says, I I see the Lord seated on the throne, exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple with glory. And the whole earth is filled with his glory. And we remember Habakkuk, right? Where Habakkuk says, um, as the waters cover the earth, or as the waters cover the sea, so the earth will be filled with the knowledge and the glory of God. When we come before God in praise and worship, we come before Him with thanksgiving, we recollect, we replay, we remember what God has done but we also remember and recollect and we, we proclaim who God is. Lord, That you, uh, Jesus says what? This is how you ought to pray. Our Father in heaven, that we pray that we have a Father who, when we come into His presence, presence, we think about Him, we meditate about Him, that we're coming into God's presence not as a distant deity, but He is a holy God who is near to us. We start thinking of who He is. We start celebrating that we start considering 
when we begin to do that, He becomes real to us, that His goodness and His mercies uh, begin to fill our affections for Him. And when we sit in His presence, we do that. We think about God. We think about what He's done. We think about who He is. And you begin to feel the presence of God. See, praise brings us into the presence of God. It, uh, it's how you and I enter in through thanksgiving and praise. When we enter in, when we start our prayer and fasting, not, oh, God, do this for me, almost like a genie. God, grant me this, bless me, bless that, bless my family, bless my health, bless my business. You know, that is not how we approach God. We approach God, we, we enter His gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. And when we do that, it shifts our focus from the realities of earth to a heavenly father, that we're spiritually catapulted into the heavenly realms. And it causes us to do one thing. Listen, that I believe is the most significant in receiving, in receiving and answering to prayer. And that is, it removes our focus from our problems and we place it on God. Honestly, what happens to a lot of people and it, it could happen to any one of us is that we can spend so much time in our prayer focusing on the problem where we rehearse the plot problem we replay in our mind the problem we we think about what he said or what she said and will this work and will this plan out and we do all this uh, anxiety and conniving in prayer rather than enjoying the lord and celebrating the lord we're making the problem the focus of our prayer time rather than his presence in his person and you see this is why praise is so important church because it gets our eyes off of the problem. It, it gets, it shifts our po focus. We have a paradigm shift and we shift it on God, of what He's done and who He is. Secondly, um, not only is praise to be the start of our prayer, but secondly is praise is a command to be obeyed. Praise and worship. Thanksgiving unto God is a command to be obeyed. You know, 34 times in the book of Psalms, it says to praise the Lord. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. It's a command to praise Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallel in Hebrew, it's the idea to get excited about. It's the idea of this exuberant, joyful celebration. Hallel, u, it's a, a second person, you all, you all get excited, you all. Yah, Yahweh, the first syllable of God's name. So you all, it's an imperative verb, you all praise God. You all worship God, get excited. Uh, about God. It's like the idea of uh, a wide receiver. A Super Bowl is coming up in the end zone, uh, doing their touchdown dance, being in front of the camera and saying hi to mom and just uh, being excited about that. Um, it's the That's what praise is. And that's the heart of it. And that's the spirit of it. You know, another 16 times in the book of Psalm, it says, bless the Lord. 16 times. And what does, what does bless the Lord refer to? Well, the word bless in Hebrew, barach, it has to, the root of it has to do with kneeling. So you can praise God, you could worship God by kneeling, and that's the part of blessing the Lord. You know, Psalm 134 says, Bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who stand by day and night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your holy hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. So how should we bless the Lord? We bless Him by lifting up our hands to Him. It's a command that we praise Him. And you might say, well, that's Old Testament stuff. Uh, how about the New Testament? Well, look at what Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 says. 
through him let through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name if your praise is confined to your time of prayer or your praise is confined to church then you and I are missing out most of what God wants you to praise him because Hebrews 13 says praise him continually let us that's a cohortative a subjunctive in the in in the Greek let us all of us the the author along with the audience he's encouraging us let us all continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God God wants you and us to constantly be offering him a sacrifice of praise that the fruit of our lips confess his name There's a sacrifice church when it comes to blessing the Lord. We lift up our hands, we clap with our hands, we sing to the Lord, we shout to the Lord. All these things are expression of worship and praise. Now, I can already imagine some of you are thinking and some of you are saying, "Man, some people will say this praise stuff singing clapping lifting of hands shouting to the lord you know it's not really my background i mean praise god i thank god that uh, those of you who came to know christ and have started attending nhcc new hope community church many of you have come from different backgrounds very solemn background maybe very liturgical sit down stand up sit down stand up and you don't say anything there's not this activ this there's not this activity of engaging in worship there's no lifting up of hands there's no shouting unto the lord there's no um clapping of hands and i fear that sometimes people come into church and they think well that's their style of church no oh, that's a new hope style or they say oh that's their denomination oh that's four square style of church I need you to hear me very clearly. Praise and the command to praise and worship has nothing to do with style. It has nothing to do with denomination. It has everything to do with the Bible. We do what the Bible has asked us to do. We obey what God commands us in the Bible. What happens though is people will say, "Well, you know what? I just don't raise my hands. You know, that's just not who I am. Or I don't like to sing because I don't really I can't really sing or I I don't like singing at all. Or, you know, I'm not the kind of person who shouts. I just don't do that. I don't I don't think you should shout in church. Uh it's just not who I am." And what I would say to you is that the Bible commands it. all of those responses re repeatedly you'll find it all throughout from genesis to revelation it's not optional it's essential it's not a suggestion like if you feel like then do it it is a command repeated all throughout the scripture and let me just say this when somebody says you know that's not who i am and that's not the kind of person that i am Here's my response to that. God would not command us to do something that he didn't put in our nature. Let me repeat that. God would not command us to do something that he hadn't put in our nature. You say, "What do you mean?" What I mean is when you got saved, 2 Corinthians 5:17, When you got saved, you got a new nature. You have a redeemed nature. So, if you're saved and you have this new nature, new desire, Joel says I will remove your old heart of stone 
and I'll put in a heart of flesh. If God, if you're in Christ Jesus and you received him, you have a new nature in Christ. So if you don't praise and worship God, it means, A, you didn't understand what's, what the scripture says and now you're going to do it. Uh, B, you didn't really understand that, that it's already in you, that you have a new nature, that it's now in your nature to sing and, and shout and to lift up your hands and to clap. Or C, maybe you're not saved. You know, I hate to be that blunt with you, you know, and I'm not angry. I'm not angry at anybody. I'm just saying, let's, let's not mess around. Let's not sugarcoat it. Let's cut straight to the point. Let's deal with reality and not fiction. And here's the reality. If you are in Christ Jesus, God has given you the ability and the desire to worship and to praise. It's in you. It's not a, a matter of how you're raised. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. You're saved. You're redeemed. You're the child of the King. It's in you. And it's incumbent upon you because it's commanded in Scripture not to do what you're comfortable doing, but what God has commanded you to do. And lastly, we'll go to number three, that praise is a sacrifice to be enjoyed. Praise and worship of the living God, it's a sacrifice that is to be enjoyed. And for that, we'll turn to 1 Chronicles. And this is uh, David, and he says, King David replied to Arauna, no, I insist on paying the full price. I will not take for the Lord what is yours or sacrifice a burnt offering that costs me anything. Excuse me, let me repeat that. Or sacrifice a burnt offering that cost me nothing. When you and I do that, it's a part of the sacrifice when we're willing to step out of our comfort zone, when we're willing to step out in faith and walk in obedience, when we walk by faith, not by sight, not by feelings, you and I would take part of the costliness, just like King David, when he made a sacrifice to God. Uh, there was this dude named Arana who said, hey, you know what? You could use this as a threshing floor. Fine, it's all good. And they was like, you know, the Pake in him could have been like, hey, all right, cool. But David, after my, a man after God's own heart said, you know what? I'll pay you. I'll pay you the full amount because I don't want to sacrifice anything to God that cost me nothing. Remember Hebrews 13? Let us offer up continually a sacrifice of praise. When we talk about the sacrifice of praise, it cost. It costs us moving out of our comfort zone. It costs us to step out and doing what we've never done before. Not because we suddenly feel like it, but because we say, you know what, Lord? If that's what you ask of me, I love you so much. You've saved me. And I'm going to do exactly what your word says. I know when I do that, I'm going to be blessed by you. And, you know, we can't dissect and we can't view the Christian life and see it like a menu we get to choose from. We don't act and treat discipleship and following Jesus like a buffet in Vegas where we go along, we pick and choose. Yo, I like that Bible stuff. Oh, I like that theology stuff. Oh, I like that... Um, the discipleship stuff, but ooh, the singing, ooh, the shouting, ooh, the lifting of hands. Uh, I, 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 ooh, that's not that's not my cup of tea. We do what God commands us to do. 
Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey all of my commandments and you'll keep my commandments. And praise is a command and you can't come to God without it. You know, as we wrap this up, we just don't praise when we feel like it. Can I say this? It's in the times when we feel least like praising God that we absolutely need to praise Him. It's those times when you're not just feeling it. Oh, I'm just not feeling it today. It's those times when you feel least like praising Him that we need to press in and praise Him the most. When I obey the command to praise Him, I am aligning my physical body and my soul to what the Bible says. When I line up my body and my mind with what the Word of God says, I am on my way to experiencing a spiritual breakthrough. Physical obedience brings spiritual breakthrough. Let me say that again. Physical obedience, it brings spiritual breakthrough. Even though we might not be feeling it, uh, we don't feel like it, when we align our mind and our body and our soul and we praise, we enter His gates with thanksgiving, when we enter His courts with praise, that is when spiritual breakthrough happens. As we are physically in your fast, as we're physically blessing the Lord, praising the Lord with our mouth, with our voice, with our hands, with all that is within us, it brings about the breakthrough of His presence. You know, I got to be honest, <laughs> um, this is church, but, you know, part of my maturity, maturation, and growing in Christ's likeness and humility, you know, in Bible college, there would be this dichotomy. Um, all the um, Greek nerds and, and Hebrew nerds, the biblical language nerds, you know, we would bring our, our Greek and Hebrew Bibles to, to chapel. And, you know, we'd open it up. It's like, that's not what the text says. It's like, no, that's not what the, you know, oh, that's, that's, uh, they're eisegeting. They're speaking into it, reading into it, not reading from it. Anyways, and, you know, First Corinthians 13, <laughs> knowledge does puff up. And so there would be this dichotomy by, you know, those who are called to pastoral ministry or those who are called to worship ministry, and they would uh, usher the student body into worship during chapel, and the Bible college nerds would just be in the back, not in the front, but in the back. It's like, oh, that's not really biblical. Oh, we need to worship God with our mind. And the crazy thing is, you know, the worship leader would say, hey, let's all lift up our hands and let's sing. I, myself included, as soon as she said that, I would, or he would say that, I would put my hand down and, and I would just be silent and not be engaged. You know, there's pride and rebellion in that attitude. When we're submitting to the worship leaders, we're submitting to um, the leadership of God. We follow and submit to God so that we might receive from Him. And I know that some of you will say, you know what, I think it's hypocrit hypocritical to do something that you don't feel like doing. I don't feel like lifting my hands. I don't feel like praising. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like fasting. And it's very hypocritical. That's why Christians are hypocrites to do something that you don't feel like doing. I couldn't disagree more. You know what? It's hypocritical for believers to only do what they feel like doing. That's hypocritical. 
Hey, we as the redeemed, purchased by the blood of Jesus, we walk by faith and not by sight. We're living our lives according to the commands and the conviction of Scripture and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So may I encourage us, church, during this 21 days of prayer and fasting, start your uh, prayer with praise. Prayer starts with praise and worship unto God. Okay. Secondly, that when we offer unto God our praise, that it's a praise, it's a command to be enjoyed. It's a command that we have to follow and submit ourselves to. And thirdly, that praise is a sacrifice. You need to, be, you need to step out of your comfort zone. You need to offer to God something that costs you. Maybe you're not into the singing and the lifting of hands and, and worshiping God, but it's commanded in the Bible and we submit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to pray for us. I'm praying for a changing of heart that God would stir in us a new heart to follow Him, to love Him, and to delight in Him. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we honor you uh, this morning. We worship you, and I just pray for your people right now that um, you would create in us a desire, Lord, to worship. Lord, I ask right now for this holy hunger, holy thirst for righteousness so that we shall be satisfied by you. Lord, I pray that we would uh, turn around our physical hunger for food into spiritual hunger for you, Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray that you would transform us when there's physical obedience, oh Lord Jesus, it will bring about a spiritual breakthrough. And so, Lord, we love you, we honor you, we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, don't forget, there is no live in-person service tonight. And, and make sure that you're connected. Uh, so that you could know and we could celebrate, Lord willing, we could celebrate our six-year anniversary. May the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, may He make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. We love you guys.